Tonight is the fourth anniversary of Lights Out. After four years of fantasy and imagination, chills and thrills, Lights Out celebrates by bringing to the microphone the internationally known actor whose name has become synonymous with the unusual and fantastic. The National Broadcasting Company takes pleasure in presenting Boris Karloff in the first of a special series of Lights Out broadcasts. Lights out, everybody. Tonight, Lights Out presents another psychological drama, a play in which the principal part is taken not by the character himself, but his thoughts. The voice you are about to hear is that of the thoughts of one Daryl Hall, accused murderer, sitting in a courtroom awaiting the return of a jury which is to decide whether he is to live or die. And as he waits, the thoughts in his mind seethe and swirl, Seethe and swirl. Guilty. Not guilty. Guilty. Not guilty. Guilty. Father in heaven, why don't I stop thinking those words? Words those jurymen are saying. He's guilty. He's not guilty. He's guilty. Not guilty. Guilty. Not guilty. No, no, I've got to stop thinking of what's going on in that room. The jurymen. I've got to stop thinking of them. I've got to keep my head clear. I've got to figure things out. When did all this start? Yes. I remember. That night, Wayne and I were sitting in my room, talking about dreams. I remember he said... Oh, come on, Daryl. Don't expect me to believe that one. Well, I'm certainly telling you the truth. A fellow with your imagination wasting his time teaching biology to a bunch of co-ed nitwits. No, sir, you should be writing fiction. <laughs> I assure you, my dear Wayne, I've told you the truth. You're really serious? Of course I am. You actually mean that in all your life you've never had a dream? Never. Not even when you were a child? To my knowledge, I've never had a dream in all my life. Well, how do you like that? <laughs> I like it very well. <laughs> I close my eyes, oblivion, and then I wake up. No nightmare hangovers for me, Peggy. Now, uh, <laughs> now, wait a minute, Daryl. Let me get this straight. You mean you've never even had a dream after, uh, you know, eating a Welsh rare bit at midnight or surrounding a dozen green apples or anything like that? <laughs> Believe me, Wayne. I've never had a dream of any shape, form, or description in all my life. A dream to me is just a word. Something that happens to other people but not to me. But everyone must dream. <laughs> well, perhaps. But it just so happens that my subconscious doesn't work that way. I tell you again, I have never dreamt. Well, what do you know about that? Just unbelievable, I tell you, unbelievable. Yes, that's what he said. Unbelievable. It was unbelievable that I'd never dreamt. And then after a while, he went away and left me there. It was early evening. But I remember that somehow, strangely, I was very tired. I sat down in the easy chair. Oh, I was so tired. I closed my eyes. I slept. And then... Then it happened. A strange murmuring in my head. Yes. That's how it started. A murmuring as if in warning. And then in, in the darkness around me... Strange faces lifting and falling. White faces. Faces without hope. Their eyes full of horror. Their white bloodless lips pleading wordlessly in a way that made the heart in me cry out in pity. And suddenly, I knew I was asleep. 
sleep and dreaming. Yes, dreaming for the first time in my life. And these faces I was seeing were things out of a dream. And even as I knew that, the dream was gone. Black. And yet I knew that I was still asleep. And I had a terrible feeling of foreboding of a horror to come in that dream. What? How? I didn't know. But I wanted to stop sleeping. I wanted to open my eyes quickly before. And then I saw her moving slowly toward me out of the darkness that was my dream. At first, a white wraith-like thing. And then I saw it was a woman. Yes, the body of a woman, but the face. Father in heaven, that face. Gross, unclean, thick, bestial brows, wrinkles of venery, the lecherous writhing of thin crimson lips that lifted from teeth, bite and pointed, and flecked with blood. Yes, a glorious body, and a face from hell. Closer, closer to me. And then she spoke one word. Kill. Yes, that's what she said. Kill. And as she said it, she moved closer. Her hands went out, her eyes in my dream, I screamed. I awoke. I remember, just at that second, the clock on the mantel began striking. Five, six, seven. Thankfully, I counted each chime, since the hearing of it meant that I was awake, awake out of the horror of that dream. When the clock had stopped chiming, I sat there. My one thought was, if this be dreaming, let me never dream again. I heard a sound. What was that? I sat still, afraid to move. And then I laughed. It was my own heart. My own heart, still pounding with fright at what I'd seen in my first dream. Oh, why do I sit here thinking of what has been? The jury in there. They've got to hang me. Free him. They've got to hang me. No, no, I mustn't think of them. Better to keep my thoughts on how it all started. Better to figure things out. Where was I? Ah, yes. Sitting there, listening to the beating of my heart. Thinking of the horror of that dream. And then, suddenly, that strange wordless murmur I had heard in my dream was whispering in my head again. Quickly as it began, it was gone. How could this be? I was awake. Awake. This was no dream. Then why had I heard that wordless entreaty? That same sound that had come from those miserable white faces that had floated before me while I slept. Why? Why? Uh, I heard it. Down behind me, who? Oh. Why, oh, yes, my friend Wayne. Must be he. Come back into the room, standing behind my chair, thinking I was asleep. I turned round and said, Wayne, is that you? <laughs> yes. I screamed. I screamed so loudly there was blood in my throat. For it was she again, that woman, that woman out of my dream. But this wasn't a dream. She was standing there, I tell you. She was standing there close to me, looking at me. And those lips out of hell said that one word. Ew. I jumped to my feet. No one in the room, no one, I tell you. I remember standing there, my head reeling. Who was she? Where did she come from? But there was no one in the room. Had there been anyone there? I didn't sleep that night. But by morning, yes, by morning, I had it all figured out. Two dreams. 
That's what it had been. And the second had been more vivid than the first. Why, of course. I'd never dreamed before. So, of course, my first dreams would seem reality. How easy it was to quiet the unrest in my mind. Easy to make oneself believe what one wants to believe. And yet, some measure of uncertainty remained with me. And Mary saw it in my face when I had dinner with her that night. Daryl, do you mind if I ask you something? Why, what a question. Of course not. Is there something wrong? Oh, you mean with the dinner? Well, you know, this is my favorite restaurant. With you, dear. Has something gone wrong at the university? Why do you ask that? The worry in your eyes. Oh. What is it, dear? Oh, it's nothing. It's nothing important. You changed your mind about loving me? Mary. Then tell me what it is, please. All right. It's really nothing to concern yourself over. Just a... a dream. Dream? Daryl, you dreamed. Yes. Last night. How marvelous. Now you're normal even when you sleep. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, isn't it? I'm back to normal, see, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> and here I thought from the expression on your face that it was something really important. <laughs> <laughs> Funny, isn't it? And I suppose in your first dream you dreamt of a... <laughs> Glorious, seductive woman. No, Mary. Ah, did you have a nightmare? If you don't mind, let's let's not talk about it anymore. Shall we have our dessert now? Now, I suggest the hot green apple pie with cheese. Daryl, and... was it as bad as all that? Horrible. Oh, that's cruel. Your very first dream, an unhappy one. Oh, well, I'm sure that if you dream again, you've more interesting times ahead. Oh, dear, look at the time. A minute to seven, and we promised the Armstrongs we'd pick them up at 7.15. Daryl, what is it? Your face. Do you hear it? Hear what? You do hear it, don't you? The voices. Voices? Daryl, what are you talking about? Why, well, the people in this restaurant are most well-behaved. Just the way it was before. Daryl, please, if this is a joke, please tell it to me. <gasps> Daryl, what is it? What are you staring at? What's behind my chair? What's there, Daryl? Tell me what's behind. Daryl, the table. Oh, Why did you throw over the table? Daryl, what is it? What is it? Why did you scream like that? What's the matter with you, Daryl? Yes. She wanted to know why I had done it. Scream thrown over the table. They all wanted to know. But how could I tell them, tell them of her standing behind Mary's chair, that thing of degradation, and those lips saying, kill. I went home. Mary thought I was overworked. Oh, no, darling, you've been working so hard. Go home and rest, dear. That's all you need, rest. Rest, rest. What good was rest? I had to reason things out. All my life I'd lived with reason, and now this, this horror. I had to know all about it. Now I was certain it was no dream. What I had seen there in the restaurant had been no thing of sleep. Hallucination. Yes, that was it. I had been working hard. Too much work was the answer, and rest would cure that. Yes, indeed. And so I rested through the next day. It was quite dark when I awoke. The phone rang. It was Mary calling to find out how I felt. Are you sure you're... Looking away the seconds. Would it happen again, this hallucination of mine? I waited. I heard no pitiful murmur of voices. Just quiet. So dark in the room. I could see the shadowy emptiness of a chair near the other wall. And then the chair was no longer empty. There was someone in it. I said, who's there? Answer me, who's there? No answer. The strange darkness in the room. Deeper and deeper I could see nothing. And then two swirling pools of flame led right. Closer and closer. I stood there. I couldn't move. rumbling began in my brain. 
Fear, I tell you. Fear tearing up my brain louder and louder while those red circles of light came closer and closer. Father in heaven, what was it? What? And then I knew it was her eyes. Her eyes burning close into mine, into the brain of me, pounding one thought into me. Kill, 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 kill. Why did she say kill. that? Why? Kill whom? Why should I kill? Why should I kill? If I had known then. <laughs> The jury, they're coming back. The verdict, what? No, not yet. Still out. Oh, they've got to find me guilty. I've got to hang. I've got to. If I live... Oh, but I mustn't think of that. I must think of what happened. Where was I? Ah, yes. That, that woman. Her eyes pounding that word into me and then... Gone again. But this was no dream. Then what? A voice within me whispered, Crazy, crazy, crazy. No, I was saving. That horror was real, real as the breath in me. And with that realization, the coldness of a wind blew around me and clutched at my heart. For if she was reality, somehow I knew that I was lost. And so it began. Night after night, the stroke of seven... First, that wailing dirge of those lost souls. And then her writhing lips. Kill, 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 kill. Father in heaven, the words began pounding in my head so that even when she wasn't there, I heard them. I hid in my room. I didn't go out. People would see this madness that had come over me. I went nowhere. And soon I knew that they were talking of me. I tell you, I my don't friend. know what's come over, Daryl. Hides in his rooms, won't even talk to me. Something's wrong there. Hey, Mary. Please, Daryl, you've got to let me see you. This talking over the phone, oh, darling, what's wrong? What's wrong? And night after night, the horror of... And the greater horror of... talk to you. Come over to my house tonight. Oh, please, Daryl, perhaps I can help you. Please, darling, please. I didn't want to go, but I went that night. Perhaps she could help. Yes. Help me understand the madness of those wailing voices and drifting white faces. Understand the horror of that woman and that maddening word. Mary, so understanding, so gentle, she could help me clear my head of the madness. Oh, Daryl, you're here at last. Mary, help me. You will help me. Oh, Daryl, your face so white. Oh, I... Don't talk yet. Sit here and rest. I'm sane, Mary. Believe me, I'm sane. Of course, dearest. Of course you are. It's that madness outside of me. Those white, drifting faces moaning at rest, me. Rest, darling. And that woman out of hell. Woman? Her eyes and lips telling me to... The time. Time? What time is it? At seven. <gasps> Daryl, what is it? I've lost track. I've got to get out of here. Daryl, don't. Wait. Don't go. Too late. Daryl, what is it? Too late. Late. You hear them, don't you, Mary? I'll go call a doctor. Listen to them. Their voices are so loud tonight. Listen, Mary. Daryl, don't. There's no one here. You hear them? You must hear them. What are they saying? Louder and louder, trying to tell me something. What are you saying, you out there? What are you telling me? Daryl, stop. Faces, voices, gone. Now oh, she'll be here. Oh, Daryl, please, you're right, make me... Kill, 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 kill. You hear her, Mary? You hear her? No, no, Daryl, please. 
again. But it was broad daylight. I'd never heard those voices in daylight before. What did they want of me? What were they saying? There was a strangeness in their pitiful voices. Yes, like, yes, like a dirge, a dirge of tears and sorrow for someone. For me, yes, for me. And then, <laughs> her voice, <laughs> laughing, laughing, triumphant. And I understood. For the first time, I understood everything. She had triumphed over me. That was why those lost souls were waving a dirge over me. I was hers. Hers forever. I turned and ran out of there like a madman. Ran, ran. And as I ran, those voices of the damned were talking to me. As we are doomed, no. we listen to her and no. oh, no, you are one of us. No peace no. through all eternity. No. For those who murder, all eternity. I covered with my ears and my hands, I ran. No use, I heard them, I heard them. Only one hope for you, man. One hope. Expiate your crime on the gallows. Pay for what you have done on the gallows, and you shall have. So that was it. My one hope. If I paid society for my crime, she would fail. I would be free of her. That thing, that essence of evil, that siren who called men to murder so that their souls would be slaves to her for all eternity. Yes, yes, I'd pay for my crime. I ran on, on, back to Mary's house. Yes, I'd pay him gladly with my life to have the peace of the rest of oblivion. I went back into the house. Yes, Mary was lying there, cold. I lifted her. Those same hands that had crushed the life out of her lifted her and carried her out into the sun. My eyes were so filled with tears that I could hardly see where I walked. People began milling about me. He's got a woman in his arms. Well, where is he carrying her? She must have fainted. No, look, he's yeah. dead. What? what? Who killed her? Huh? Hey, 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 mister. Hey, mister, who killed her? I did. Who killed her? I killed her. 
With my own hands, I killed her. And please, I want to die for her. Hey, 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 hey. And then the trial. My friends, they wanted to save me. Clever eternities, sanity commissions and twists of the law. But I wanted to die, I tell you, I had to die. If they set me free, if I lived and died as most men die, the death they call a natural one, then she would have me. No, no, I want a hang but a neck until dead. I want that noose around my neck. The trap beneath my feet, the jailer pulled the switch. My feet dancing in air. The noose strangling me as my hands strangle Mary. Free for my cry that I'll be free. Free of that horror with the writhing lips and blood-stained teeth. All in the court. All in the court. The jury. They're coming in. Guilty. They've got to find me. Gentlemen of the jury, have you reached a verdict? We have, Your Honor. Guilty. The clerk of the court will read the verdict, please. Guilty. Guilty. The jury, find the defendant guilty of murder in the first degree. Oh, guilty. 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 Guilty.